Gonna start now with the nation. Student loan scheme set for takeoff with 12, 1.2 uh, million beneficiaries. Lagos community marches for Obashiv candidate. Kaduna Assembly raises 13 man panel to probe finances under El Rufai. First Lady's Renewed Hope Initiative empowers 120 Southwest women farmers with 60 million naira. IMF projects inflation decline to 23% and 18% in 2025 and 2026, respectively. Dangote Refinery crashes diesel price to 1,000 naira per litre. How Tinimbu is getting security and economy right by its Omokri. Okay, which story are we starting with? What's the major headline? Student loan? Who was that? Yes, I have the student loan. So um, the student loan is set to take off anytime soon. It was a bit... The, the way they put it in quotes, anytime soon, it was um, signed into law. Um, the bill was signed on the 3rd of April. And this is a very ambitious project according to what the nation put together. The expectation is that 1% of revenue generated by the FIRS would be used to fund student loan. The target for FIRS this year is 19.4 trillion naira. So that means that if they hit their target of 19.4 trillion, there would be um, 194 billion available as loans to beneficiary students. They said repayments of these loans would, would commence two years after NYSE. So the expectation is that between the um, first year is in, um, um, after NYSE, the second year, we'll be able to, people should be able to get a, their job. The, the plan is to reach out to 1,200 million young Nigerians will be the first batch. And I'm hoping that if the anytime soon will mean this, um, the new year of school that will be starting maybe around September, those that will be resuming after they are reaching this jam. <laughs> I'm hoping for an impactful time, and the chief executive officer of the Nigerian Education Loan Fund, Mr. Kitude Soya, has not given us a date, but we know that over time they're putting the... Nigerians will hold anything they say to... They will hold it and take it to court. Mm. So I'm sure the man is being careful that. I don't want you to say, uh, Oga, you said this date, too, and now this date has not commenced. So we're wishing them the best because 1.2 million young Nigerians getting student loan will mean a whole lot for yeah. improving education. Yeah. All right, so I was at the event yesterday, uh, Senator Olure Mitinumbu yesterday launched the Renewed Hope Initiative in the Southwest Zone, um, and all the various first ladies were the quad state coordinators, and it was done simultaneously with um, the North Central, North East, and Northwest um, launch also. She said the initiative was taken to boost agriculture um, for women especially, the empowered women across the South um, West zones. So a check of 10 million naira was given to all the first ladies to give out to all the beneficiaries across the state. They actually had their names of the beneficiaries in mm. the list. So it wasn't as if it was, um, it was just picked up from nowhere. Yeah. And then um, they also, she also um, empowered 100,000 naira, all 100 people living with disability with 100,000 naira each. Oh, wow. Some of them came also on the, at the event yesterday. Oh. It was, it was, the idea really was to empower women, especially those who are vulnerable in communities mm -hmm. um, in agriculture. And she's also launched about three or four programs where she wants every home, every one of us to have a garden. She's it's a campaign called Every um, Home a Garden. So we all have gardens in our house where you feed ourselves. And there's going to be a youth farmers competition in schools. Mm. There's quite a number of initiatives she's putting out together to see how we can support, women can be supported on farming and so that we can feed ourselves and empower women to be more, um, um, to, to be able to give back to their communities as a um, as self sufficient. Women, so. self sufficient, Good exactly. One. Well done. So it was, a, it was a really interesting event yesterday, and I, I was really happy <coughs> to be one of the MCs at the event. Oh, wow. It was great to see the amazing work the She's Renewed Hope been, yeah. Initiative She's is working into, into, yeah. into also, women, especially. Yeah. Good. So the International Monetary Fund, IMF, has projected 23% inflation rates for Nigeria in 2025 and further dropped to 18% in 2026. Uh, their global economic outlook yesterday uh, was where they released the report. And, um, you know, they also had a meeting, the ongoing IMF World Bank Springs meeting in Washington, D.C. Uh, Division Chief IMF Research Department, Daniel Lee, uh, said that Nigeria is moving in the right direction with their economic reforms and including exchange rate reforms, which contributed to the in inflation rates in March to 33.2%. Uh, I took that yesterday as well. 
and they said that we see inflation declining to 23% next year and then 18% in 2016, that the growth in Nigeria is steady, but actually rising this year from 2.9% to uh, last year to 3.3% this year, they say we have seen an expansion from the recovery in the oil sector with a better security situation and also improved agriculture, uh, benefiting from the better weather conditions and the introduction of the dry season farming. So there's a broad-based increase also in the financial sector, in the IT sector. Though inflation has increased, but if we hold on to these policies and continue in it, we'll see a decline in inflation in the coming years. So it's more like... Um, we just need to be sure of where we are and hold on to some of these policies and tighten some things a bit more. We'll see how we can begin to reduce inflation according to their projections. Okay, I have the story on Kaduna State. Mm -hmm. um, a 13-man ad hoc committee was raised yesterday by the Kaduna State House of Assembly to investigate financial transactions in the state under former Governor Malam Nasser El Rufai. And um, the person who is in charge of this committee, his name is um, Liman Yusuf. He said the committee is just to set up, is set up just so that they can be able to, you know, monitor how he spent the money during his own tenure and all. And so he now said that, um, because we know earlier on, two weeks ago, I think the governor of um, Kaduna State, Ubasani, came and complained that he inherited a huge debt worth $587 billion and then um, $587 million, $85 billion naira and then um, 115 called contractual liabilities mm -hmm. and because of that once the federal government gives him his allocation of 12 um, 12 billion dollars he uses 7 billion to finance these loans wow. and then he's just he's just left with 3 billion and for wow. now he's now you know he's now owing salaries he can't pay salaries because the 3 mm -hmm. billion is it's barely enough for him Yes, it's barely That's enough why for he's him. That's just trying to probe mm. for the yes. former press governor. So he's, he's barely enough he's for him collected. to be able to pay salaries and all. So they said they just want to probe that. It's not like they want to spite anybody or anything, but they want to know how come that whole debt is yeah. there and everything. Now to the point, federal government rights governors as agency predicts flooding in 31 states. Market is excited as Dangote lowers diesel to 1,000 naira to the litre. 27 states fail to access 54.9 billion naira UBEC fund. $30 billion loss FG may revoke unused oil well licenses. NDLA destroys 300, over 304,000 <coughs> kilograms of illicit drugs in Lagos. Blood on Chidima's dress matched Atagas DNA says expert. UCH denies harboring Yoruba nation agitators. And PDP NWC submits reports on Wiki as NEC meets Thursday. Thursday. Okay, one story. The major headline. So yeah. the federal government has written at least 31 governors informing them of an impending flooding in their states between April and November this year. The Minister of Water Resources and Sanitation, Professor Joseph Utsev, was the one who stated this yesterday in Abuja while he was briefing journalists on the 2024 annual flood outlook for the country. And he said that um, um, out of that a total of 148 local government areas in Lagos, Kanu, Delta, and 28 other states have been categorized as high flood risk areas. Now, also in preparation for the impending flood, various state governments are, you know, have told the uh, punch yesterday that they would demolish buildings on river channels to relocate res residents and clear drainages to prevent flooding. So I went to see one of my tailors yesterday, and I realized that they were demolishing their houses. So some of those houses were around like the uh, waterways, yes. And she said there was no form of compensation conversation going on, but they are asking them to clear out and everything. So we're even discussing in a hurry. So where are you? Where is your shop? Where are you going to be? And all of that. It was part of this now where they are making sure they are removing everything that's blocking, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. the drainages you, and you, the waterways. You know, you... But I'm asking how long, how, because those were old houses. So it was allowed, they allowed them to build on those houses and now we're trying to just demolish. Oh. However, some states are also saying that they are going to take up other measures to ensure that... I have to go on a know. break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.